正会。Rebirth of the malicious empress of military lineage, Chapter 153, Pushing the waves. The matter of Shen Yu and Shen Dongling exchanging marriage eventually had an unimaginable result. The latest update was that under the request of the Huang family. Shen Wan could only agree to let Shen Yu marry in with the status of a pinchi, aka equal wife. One did not know what Shen Dongling said to the Wang family this time, so that the Wang family was not willing to listen to Shen Wan's explanation at all. A fine marriage could become an animosity at the end, thus Shen Wan had no way out. But this was not the result that Shen Yu hoped for. This time, there was no one else for Shen Yu to exchange the marriage with. And Shen Yu had dropped all pretenses and made a fuss all day, indicating that she was not willing to marry to the Wang family and could not tolerate Shen Dongling being on equal status as her. Not only was Shen Yu unwilling, Chen Rikayu was also very angry. Chen Rikayu was considered to be a person who knew about the bigger picture, but the matter of Shen Yu's marriage was a huge matter. Thus, she could not swallow this down and insisted to Shen Wan to go to the Wang family to talk to them. The previously loving couple of the third household had been in conflict these days, making all the servants in Kaiyu Shuiyu on to dare not breath a little louder. Today, it was the same. Chen Re Kaiyu paced back and fro in the room, and suddenly turned before walking over to Shen Wan and said worriedly. What is the Wang family thinking now? One cannot let it drag on with you, Er Shen Dongling. That little slut has occupied our Yu Er's reputation, and can it be that she also wants to be an official young mistress? Master, you must go to the Wang family to talk sense. Her every uttering of little slut was like a different person from her usual good cultured and mannered self, making Shen Wan frown without helping. He resisted his temper. Now with the current situation. The only way is to let you er marry in as a pinchi, aka equal wife. First, then plan later. With you being so noisy all day, you er will also be restless. There are just no other ways, Master. Chen Rikayu shrieked. You er is your daughter and the real day daughter of our third household, and has been treated like pearl and jade while raising her up. How could you say to let her be a pinchi, aka equal wife? Moreover, it is to be of equal status with that little slut. Even if this matter was Yu Er's fault, there is also Shen Dong Ling's temptation. How could you be so emotionless? Seemingly being pierced by Chen Rikayu's voice, Shen Wan was somewhat angered. Then, what do you say I should do? The longer the matter is delayed, the only one at the disadvantage is Yu Er. If it is exposed, just like you say. Shen Dongling as a Shu daughter would not be affected much, but Yu Er would be critiqued and joked by others, and the Shen residents would become a joke. What would you do? Chen Rikayu jumped in shock by Shen Wan's furious voice and somewhat trembled. But upon thinking of Shen Yu, she then said, "But one cannot let Yu Er suffer like that, right? No, I am going to the Wang residents to talk sense." Enough, Shen Wan said in a fury. You stay in the residence. Watch Shen Yu carefully and not give me any more trouble is the correct path. Chen Rikayu was stunned. After living for so many years with Shen Wen, even when he was extremely angry, Shen Wen would not say such things to her. It was as if he despised and was impatient, and her heart tightened and actually unconsciously said, "You and me have been husband and wife for so many years. At the beginning, we were so harmonious and loving that we agreed not to bring in concubine. Currently, you despise that my appearance has withered." And mother kept saying all day to bring in an angui concubine, higher status concubine. Your heart was moved, has it? You despise me. Chen Rikayu had always been somewhat small-minded, although she was born in a scholarly family. But she liked to throw a little temper, which Shen Wan would fall for it. After soaking in the honey days for far too long, it would be difficult to avoid being boring. When one did it correctly, it would make men's heart weak. But unfortunately, when it is done when one was young, it would be interesting. But when done when one was older, it would be rather irritating. Especially during the past few days, Chen Rikayu had been running around due to Shen Yu's matter. And she had become haggard and did not take care of herself. In addition, the sloopy and unassuming way of kicking up a fuss looked somewhat ridiculous in Shen Wan's eyes. He looked at Chen Rikayu faintly. If you think like this, then just think like this. 
He then turned around and left with a shake of his sleeves. Chen Rikayu was stunned and stood shakily rooted on the spot as the maids by her side, Shi Qing and Hua Yi, quickly supported her. A fear gradually emerged in Chen Rikayu's heart. She suddenly felt that some things had slowly changed, and the most scariest thing was that she did not know when did they started to change. The Den and Kayu Shu Yu on quickly spread to other courtyards like the long-shelved western courtyard. The western courtyard was very spacious and neat and after Chang's AI King stayed there, she would often move some plants, making the western courtyard have a unique and elegant air. At this moment Chang's AI King was sitting in the room and kept a letter on the table, and place it casually on the desk. As Zhao Mama opened the window so that the room would not be stuffy, she spoke to Chang's AI King. Is it a letter from eldest Shen Furin? Chang Zai King nodded her head. Actually Chang Zai King was unable to tell if the letter was actually from Lu Zhu Yan or Shen Miao. When she thought about Shen Miao, a young female with a pair of clear eyes that seemed to see through everything came to her mind and made her unknowingly tremble. Lu Zhu Yan indicated in the letter that Chang Zai King had not gone to the Shen mansion for a long time and if she was free she could come over to the Shen mansion for a chat, and that Lu Zhu Yin still had the heart to find a good family for Chang Zai King. It's said to find a good family, but Chang Zai King thought about something else from this letter. Some time back she had changed targets from Shin Zin to Shen Wen, and it was much more relaxing for Chang Zai King to deal with Shen Wen than she expected. There was no other reason other than Shen Wen was one who liked elegance, and Chang Zai King was just his appetite. After the matter with Shen Yu and Shen Dongling, the contradiction between Shen Wen and Chen Rikayu got bigger and bigger, and he quite liked coming to the western courtyard. Chang Zai King had became the beauty to speak comforting words, and in the course of time Shen Wen was used to coming here, and Chang Zai King did not neglect that Shen Wen's eyes had more and more appreciation. The iron had to be strike when it was hot. Was not now that hot time, just as she was thinking. The servant outside came in to report that Shen Wen had arrived. Zhao Mama quickly retreated and when Shen Wen entered the room, he saw Chang Zai King holding a letter in her hands, reading with relish. He then curiously asked, Whose letter is it that made you read so intently? Chang Zai King then put down the letter in her hand with a smile like she had just saw Shen Wen coming in. It is sent from eldest Shen Furen. The smile on Shen Wen's face lingered and he pretending to ask without thoughts, Why did eldest Sao send a letter? Chang Zai King smiled, Shen family's eldest Furen is a good person and wants to match make for me. Most probably she sees that I do not have any support at such an age. It is of good intentions. She said candidly and looking at Shen Wen, she continued, if third master is free on some day, do help me to take a look. Perhaps one would know the good family that eldest Furen mentioned. She smiled happily and her features became more graceful and moving. But Shen Wen gradually could not smile. Things were not usually alone but found in pairs. This little matter in the Shen residence was also talked about in Rong Jing Tang. Old Shen Furen sat on the couch and the maid behind her was gently massaging her shoulders as Wang Mama softly said, Old Furen, third master had gone to the western courtyard again. Old Shen Furen's eyes that were closed opened slightly as if one was pondering over something and after a moment they then slowly closed, go then go. Even though the identity is a little low, one will be a concubine, thus the identity is not a concern. Wang Mama also smiled, now old Furen can rest assured. Previously one had let third master bring in concubines but third master was not willing. Now with young lady king as the first one, in the future third master would accept others and spread out the branches. There will always be a son or daughter. Old Shen Furen sighed, if it was not that there is no grandson in the Shen residence, I would not have intervened in his courtyard. Originally he protected Chen Rikayu so tightly that he did not listen to me, his own mother. Thus Chen Rikayu could be so arrogant in front of me. At that time I had said that one fear that even if Chen Rikayu is favored, she cannot give birth to a son. Men are all greedy for fresh things and one day she would be thrown away. Now, was I not on target? Wang Mama quickly agreed with old Shen Furen's words and said, 
Of course, old Furan has eaten more salt than they had eaten rice, and can see things much further ahead. Old Shen Furan seemed to be enjoying Wang Mama's flattering and a trace of pride appeared on her face. If one knew earlier that number three likes this kind of females, I would have found more Shu daughters of scholarly families. Chen Rikayu had always seen herself as unrivaled under the heavens. She did not take a good look at herself and thought that one can be so arrogant just because she read some books in her maiden family, and cannot even manage a household well. Finishing, she continued, I see that Chang Zai King is not bad, obedient well mannered and is not pretentious. It is understandable that number three would like her. But currently this should not be disclosed at all. Wang Mama said, if this continue on, when third Furin finds out, one fear that there will be disputes. Dispute? She dare. Old Shen Furin said furiously but afterwards she thought carefully and waved her hand tiredly. However, things would be troublesome if there is a fuss. Since both of them are interested, you should go and help in a few days' time. When the wood has become a boat, let us see if Madame Chen dares to block it. If she dares, then the Shen family cannot afford to protect a matriarch with no son. Then just send her a divorce letter. Wang Mama could only agree cautiously. The chaos in the Shen residence because of the third household's matter finally spread to another master's, Shen Dongling's, ears. Xing Hua was carefully brewing tea. High graded June Mountain Thai Zin tea for Shen Dongling at the moment. Even though the Huang family did not have the wealth to rival a country, but it was particular with clothes and food. Compared to the treatment of Shu daughters, this was incomparable. Thus, Shen Dongling was living very well. If the Shen family was present, they would be flabbergasted that this leisurely and joyous beauty was actually that weak Shu daughter of the second household. Shen Dongling picked up the teacup to take a sip and Xing Hua said worriedly, This servant heard that someone came from the Shen residence again, saying that second young lady will be marrying over as a pinchy, aka equal wife. If second young lady really comes in, what will young lady be? One fear that third Furin and third master would trip young lady up. Rest assured, she will not marry over. Shen Dongling smiled, it is not possible for the Huang family to let Shen Yu come in. Even if Shen Yu come, it is not possible for her to live well and will be destined to be watched out by others. It is better to pick a few good blots of good fabric to send to Yi Niang for her to make some new clothes. The Shen Dongling at this moment had the air of a matriarch just from lifting a hand. Xing Hua thought for a while and smiled, young lady has always been smart. It is this servant that does not understand. One do not know what did young lady said to young master Wang that now one did not even want to see the people from the third household. But the people of the third household really self-inflicted their wounds. It was clearly second young lady that brought up the exchanging of marriage, but they still wanted to pour all the dirty water on to young lady. This is really too malicious. Shen Yu said that everything about the matter of exchanging the bride, was all Shen Dongling's scheme and when it spread to the Huang family, Xing Hua was so angry. At the beginning when Shen Yu begged Shen Dongling to marry on her behalf, she clearly said that she would not implicate Shen Dongling, but at the turn of a head she took herself out of it. This changing of face was just too fast that Xing Hua scorned upon it. Not to say why Xin Wan who was usually so clever would be muddled this time. The reason why the Shen family did not treat third household well was because Shen Dongling told Wang by one sentence that Shen Yu adored Prince Ding, Fu Zayu Yi, and the third household had the intention to stand on the side of him. Shen Wan wholeheartedly wanted to dispel Shen Yu's thoughts of marrying to Fu Zayu Yi, thus he picked the Wang family because in the fight for the heir apparent, the Wang family was not standing on Fu Zayu Yi's side. At the end Shen Yu still adored Prince Ding and the Shen family third household supported Prince Ding. If Wang by married Shen Yu, in the future it inevitably be troublesome. If the Wang family and Shen family's third household married, then there would be disagreement. Thus as long as the Wang family was not silly, they would not let Shen Yu come in. As for the change of marriage to Shen Dongling, it was fortunate for the Huang family. Was not it good to draw the line clearly with Prince Ding? 
The destiny between Shen Yu and the Wang family was doomed to be broken. However Shen Dongling would not find it pitiful or be sympathetic to it. Whatever cause was planted would result in whatever fruits. Everything was Shen Yu deeds. Naturally she had to swallow the bitter fruits. It was the Wang family's intention to make things difficult by letting Shen Yu marry in as a pinchy, aka equal wife. And even though Shen Wan agreed to it, would Shen Yu obediently follow? Shen Dong Lin did not think so. Not only did Shen Dong Ling not think so, even Shen Miao also did not think so. Jing said, the dispute in the Shen residence is big. This time the show really make one feel the bustle. Shen Miao smile indifferently, perhaps, the bigger the dispute is, the better and we will not be affected since we already have no relations. Jings looked at Shen Miao and walked over to Gu Yu to whisper to her, What is with young lady these days? Why does one see that she do not seem to be happy? Gu Yu shrugged and looked over at Shen Miao's direction. She saw Shen Miao sitting in the courtyard and she did not even flip a page of the book. Her hand held her chin as she looked up into space somewhat lazily, thinking of what idea. It seems a little so. Gu Yu also nodded. Recent days, there is no spirit no matter what one says. No spirit? Jing's shook her head. If it was before, upon seeing the Shen residents fall into misfortune, young lady would always be somewhat happy. Now the Shen residence is in a mess, but young lady only waved her hands upon hearing about it, like it was not very interesting. Could it be that she is sick? Can eat and drink? can walk and jump. What kind of sickness can be like this? Gu Yu rolled her eyes, you think this is love sickness? Who is suffering from love sickness? A voice behind them came over, making both of them to jump in shock. They turned around and saw Lu Ling walking over. Jings and Gu Yu quickly greeted. This servant greets be a young master. Lu Ling waved his hand and walked over towards Shen Miao. When he reached Shen Miao's side and saw that Shen Miao was sitting there in a daze, he then asked, Youngest Biao sister. Shen Miao turned her head, and when she saw it was Lu Ling, she smiled, older brother Ling. Lu Ling sat down opposite of Shen Miao. His right hand still had not recovered but Shen Kaiyu had found a book of left-handed sword play for Lu Ling. Thus these days he had been seriously practicing sword play with his left hand. His mind had been much more open and warmer. When he went out, almost all the females would shyly steal a look. Hearing from Lu Tan's teasing, it seemed that a number of young ladies from officials' families were interested in Lu Ling. Lu Ling said, what is youngest Biao sister thinking to be this engrossed? Shen Miao gently smiled, nothing much just sitting and daydreaming. Lu Ling thought about the lovesickness and such that Jing's and Gu Yu had spoken about and his heart sank. He looked at Shen Miao and said untraceably, one thought that youngest Biao sister has reached the marriageable age and become a little naughty. Shen Miao did not seem to understand Lu Ling's words and said blandly, speaking of marriageable age, it should be older Biao sister who is anxious first. Lu Ling laughed, also true. Shen Miao looked at Lu Ling, for what matter is older Biao brother looking for me? Lu Ling was startled for a moment before a trace of awkwardness rose on his elegant face. He came here to take a look at Shen Miao, and now Shen Miao asked him such a serious question, he did not know how to answer. However he was quick-witted, oh, a few days back some of the snacks that youngest Biao sister gave me were too sweet. So one came over to tell youngest Biao sister that Gu Yu who was standing behind had a somewhat resentful expression on. Her young lady was not the pastry chef of the Shen residence and not the master who makes cakes. Lu Ling ate Shen Miao's cakes but still dare to blame Shen Miao. Jing's however was fighting back a laugh. Gu Yu had a lump of wood for a brain and could not see it but she was smart. This young Biao master obviously wanted to get closer to Shen Miao but was unable to find an excuse. However Jing saw her young lady having a lack of mood for small talk and shook her head, feeling that it was a pity. The falling flowers were yearning for love, but the heartless brook rippled on. One feared that her young lady would not appreciate young Biao master's earnest intentions. Shin Miao indeed frowned and asked, too sweet? I did not add a lot of sugar. Lu Ling scratched his head awkwardly and said when he thought of something, Tenor mentioned that youngest Biao sister knows how to make cakes with fruit flavors, 
one ask if it is possible to make that for me the next time, Shen Miao was stunned. Lu Tan often come over to Shen Miao's courtyard to look for her to chat and she would just eat the snacks on the table without any fuss. Those cakes were those that Shen Miao herself attempted to make since she had not made them for a lifetime. It was very unfamiliar when she tried making them. However Lu Tan found it delicious and ate clean the entire plate of snacks. That pastry had fruit juices mixed in it and it was just the taste that the great Liang imperial family liked. Previously Zi Jingxing instructed Shen Miao to make two baskets of snacks so that he could allay his hungry when killing others. Afterwards Princess Ming'an was indeed eliminated by Zi Jingxing but the two baskets of snacks were not given to him. Even more. Afterwards Zi Jingxing disappeared for a period of time and Shen Miao had been watching the chaos in the Shen residence, and was also making snacks at the same time, so as to return the other person's favor. Just as she was thinking, Shen Miao's gaze gradually hanged down. Speaking of which, Zi Jingxing had left for a number of days, and there did not seem to be much talk in the Ding capital when the great Liang's Prince Ruai left so casually. One was unsure if Zi Jing crossing was safe or not, after all he was still carrying the identity of the dead little Zi Marquis of the residence of the Marquis of Linen. It was difficult on the front and back for him. Lu Ling saw that Shen Miao started to be in a daze again, and he waved his hands in front of her. Youngest Biao sister, Shen Miao recovered to her senses and smiled apologetically. Sorry older Biao brother, this recipe was made by me in a whim, and at that time one only made that one plate and it was all eaten by older Biao sister. If I have to make that again, I do not know if I make it. Jing's widened her eyes as she stood behind Shen Miao, as her young lady could actually lie to young Biao master with a serious face. Jing's naturally knew whether Shen Miao knew how to make those snacks. Shen Miao had memorized the recipe and personally made it, looking like she was very familiar with it. So why was she not willing to make a plate for young master Lu? Could it be that young Biao master had offended her young lady? Jing's was very puzzled. Lu Ling had totally not expected Shen Miao's rejection and was embarrassed and somewhat in a loss. Shen Miao's appearance was leisurely and there was no trace of shame on her expression. Since it were the great Liang's imperial family's snacks, the process of making them was complicated. She had done it once but had no patience to keep doing it for others. It would be better for Lu Ling to get the pastry chef of the kitchens to make him something else. They conversed here but did not know that their cheerful and witty chatting appearance was seen by someone afar. That person was clad in white with a white fan. It was a picture of graceful nobleman. It was Jiao Yang. Ever since Zi Jingxing left, Jiao Yang had followed Zi Jingxing's instruction and stayed in the Shen mansion, because of the injury on Lu Ling's hand. Thus it was convenient to see what kind of movements Shen Miao had. Not only that, he could actually see the lively appearance of Lu Ling and Shen Miao. Jiao Yang's gaze on Lu Ling had some sympathy in it, and when he looked at Shen Miao again, he shook his head and sighed deeply. What are you sighing about? A head suddenly stretched out from behind Jiao Yang's back, and nearly scared him so much that he took a step back. That person took a step from behind Jiao Yang. With a moving brows and heroic spirits, who else could it be but Lu Tan? Dr. Jiao. Lu Tan asked, what are you doing here? She followed along Jiao Yang's gaze, and saw the scene of Shen Miao and Lu Ling chatting while sitting down before looking back at Jiao Yang. Jiao Yang felt somewhat restless to receive Lu Tan's strange gaze when he heard Lu Tan said in understanding, I know. So you like youngest Biao's sister? Jiao Yang hurriedly reached out to cover Lu Tan's mouth. What a joke. Zi Jingxing did not only send him one person to the Shen mansion, there were secret guards too. If any of the itchy mouth secret guards said these words to Zi Jingxing, then he would not be able to stay in the Ming Chi. Jiao Yang looked at Lu Tan, who was struggling in his hands, and helplessness frowned in his heart. This Lu Tan really knew how to find trouble for him. This already was not the first time. Lu Tan finally struggled out from Jiao Yang's hands, and most probably knew that her voice was a little loud so she suppressed it. However her expression was still filled with pride, as if she had caught some leverage from Jiao Yang. 
So you like youngest Biao's sister, so you are jealous, do not be smart. Jiao Yang said, this one dare not have feelings for fifth Shen young lady. Lu Tan burst her lips, good that you know it yourself. My youngest Biao sister is a so smart and pretty young lady, that it would be hard to find one even if one held a lantern to look. You a doctor dare to think about it? Just go and look at a mirror. Her tone of voice deeply pierced Jiao Yang's heart and made Jiao Yang have the urge to immediately find a mirror to see if he had that kind of look that could not be seen outside like what Lu Tan mentioned. Thinking of his own highness, Jiao Yang coldly laughed and pointed towards Lu Ling's direction with his chin. I am delusional and he is qualified. Lu Tan looked at Lu Ling and sighed. Older brother Ling is very good but is not the person for youngest Biao sister. These words were out surprisingly of the contrary for Jiao Yang, as he thought that Lu Tan would wholeheartedly support her own Tang Zhong, thus he asked. Oh, why say that? Youngest Biao sister is a person with a mind of her own, and older brother Ling's temper is too warm but unable to make any sparks. One thinks that youngest Biao sister only treated older brother Ling as an older brother. Lu Tan felt that it was a pity. You still know about sparks? Jiao Yang was surprised and continued asking, then what kind of person does your youngest Biao sister will have sparks with? Jiao Yang only casually teased Lu Tan, and never had thought that she would really think about it seriously and finally said, people like Prince Ruai. Jiao Yang was surprised. Prince Ruai is good looking and also mysterious and unpredictable. And what is more, he is a person who value relations and righteousness. Thus he can be considered as an incomparably good man in this world. My youngest Biao sister should match with this kind of husband. But this is probably only this one's wishful thinking. Lu Tan's voice was suppressed but she saw Jiao Yang smiling at her when she lifted her head. She then realized that she had said too much to Jiao Yang, and since she did not have such a good relationship with Jiao Yang, Lu Tan's expression immediately changed and she said by Jiao Yang's ears, Hey! You got a hold of me because of the matter of me going to the residence of Prince Ruai. Today I know that you admire my youngest Biao sister in your heart and also got a hold of you. Since both of you got hold of each other's leverages, then it is considered even. In the future you better not think of using the matter of Prince Ruai to threaten me. Be careful that I will tell my youngest Biao sister about your cunningness, and let you be unable to lift your head up in front of her for the rest of your life. Lu Tan said with a hostile voice. Jiao Yang really did not know whether to laugh or cry. In actual fact, he was more fearful of Zi Jing Xing all right. But seeing Lu Tan's appearance of being smart and her brows arching in craftiness, suddenly he had interest. He got nearer and said, that is good. Then let us hold each other leverages. How about that? He was born with a playboy feel and when he spoke to Lu Tan, he was very handsome. Lu Tan was originally one who liked good-looking things, but one did not know why she felt a little guilty conscience. She violently shoved Jiao Yang to a side. She was a person who practiced martial arts, and that one shove could almost take blood from Jiao Yang. Lu Tan turned around and left, saying angrily, Letcher. Jiao Yang touched his chin and slowly smiled. All the trivial things that happened in the Shen mansion did not attract Shen Miao's attention, as they were all irrelevant and boring matters to Shen Miao's eyes. It was until the second day when something happened in the Shen residence that was somewhat interesting. Shen Yu had ran away, 